Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are in the name of Jesus, we glorify it. We surrender everything to you and we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you alone will be glorified in this place. In the name of Jesus. Just sit down quietly. Such a strong atmosphere. I want us to pray tonight. Um, but the teaching that I'm bringing tonight will really, really change us. Praise the Lord. For me, I, I have been changed by it and I'm being changed by it and I guarantee you, no matter how, how much you have not felt a sense of spiritual progress, you will feel one tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I've been studying personally the ministry of Jesus um, once and again I I have the opportunity to study very carefully what Jesus did how he did ministry when he walked upon the earth because the Bible tells us that we should look unto Jesus calls him the author and the finisher of our faith in other words, everything we do in this kingdom life must be within the jurisdiction of that which was demonstrated by the Christ himself. He not only came as a substitute for us, he came as a model. He came as a masterpiece of God's intention so that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we will align everything we do to be consistent with both his ideology and his doings. It is only when that happens, listen carefully, that God can be glorified. Jesus has become for us the model of that which can satisfy God. God can only be satisfied in the Christ and in anyone who does anything that is reflective of the Christ. The only basis for God to be satisfied in the life of a man is when Jesus is being glorified and when every activity that man is engaged in is a reflection of both the person, the character of the Christ. So I've been studying the ministry of Jesus and I'm telling you, um, Jesus is truly and literally the greatest inspiration in my life. His, his model, his understanding. Every time I study the Gospels, I am, I am amazed at his spirituality his intelligence his paradigm and his approach to life his approach to people his definition and his approach of ministry his approach of success everything about jesus christ inspires me and so as i study him i check my life i check koinonia i check the things that we do against the benchmark of the model the reference that has been created and if at any point i find myself short of that standard or i find our leadership and our approach in the ministry short of that standard then he does not repent to look like us 
are we to, are we together now the responsibility is upon us to realign ourselves so that we reflect him in his fullness and um it never tires me i've i've studied the gospel again and again i don't know how many times but quite frankly every time you study scripture with a new light and a new understanding it seems to me as though the higher you rise in the spirit the more certain things in scripture open up to you in a way you will never believe they were there not because you are not aware of their reality but there is an understanding that makes certain things now open to you because you now have both an experience with God an experience with life that can help you understand those things more personally so the more I grow spiritually the more emotionally connected I am I I no longer just study the Bible for the 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 spiritual education necessarily I I, I see myself I when I study the Bible I'm, I'm very emotional about it many times I'll have to just close the Bible and fight tears because I look at these scriptures and I know how true it is let me tell you something the more you grow in God the more emotionally connected you are to the study of the word you no longer study just for information you you literally become emotionally connected to it because you are rising at a frequency that is closer to the state Jesus and the apostles were when they wrote this so when you study the Bible from that height you are able to not only understand what they are writing but discern the motivation you can literally feel the emotions around the things that they wrote and this is what has been happening to me as I study the Gospels and um, I rediscovered a few things there are things I have known but then for me the Lord nailed it in a way that blessed me so powerfully and part of that is what I'll be sharing tonight briefly and then trust God that we pray hallelujah I have studied many concepts I have taught them um, the concept of sin the concept of holiness the concept of righteousness the concept of the kingdom kingdom advancement the concept of success and prosperity the concept of faith all of these are very important kingdom concepts that must be understood by the believer because if any of these concepts are misunderstood or inaccurately understood they will sponsor error in the life of a believer though well-meaning you will find yourself with a frame of understanding that may shortchange you from experiencing and living the fullness of the life that Jesus gave us hallelujah and um, Philippians chapter 2 please we're going to read 3 and 4 as a foundation for the things that I'll be sharing tonight my teaching tonight seeks to build in us in a greater measure the character of the Christ as we prepare to wrap up the year we have seen the hand of God in remarkable ways and God has really helped us we have enjoyed his benevolence and his grace once and again he will bring in words like this that file us that build us that align us so that our work will be very productive say amen Philippians chapter 2 I'll read 3 and 4 pay attention it says let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves verse 4 look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others when you find the new translations it's an attempt to say that you pay attention to the needs of others above your need i i want to talk um well i would just start here but I, I'm, I'm really not going to dwell there on the concept the root cause of 
majority of the challenges that believers have listen please the root cause of jealousy the root cause of envy listen carefully the root cause of lust and addictions the root cause of sin the root cause of um, selfishness the root cause of covetousness you see all of these attributes listen let me teach you something you see spiritual things we know it by now are more grave and more serious whether good or bad than physical things are we together now did you know that um god forbid but come if it's an example please if i get this lady pregnant what did i say is an example listen are we together now i'm very serious tonight laugh now because i'm sure that you will not need to laugh again as we continue if i get this lady pregnant for instance listen it will look more regrettable because there is something obvious her stomach will protrude are we together but if i lost after this lady now she doesn't get pregnant by me lusting after her so i will think i am free are, are we are we together now if i slap this lady and there are marks of my hands on her face you call it wickedness and you say this guy is wicked because there is a physical expression but if i hold bitterness and jealousy bitter anger and rage sorry my dear against her it's easy for you to think i'm a spiritual man are we together now let me tell you something i have discovered bless you darling you can pick up your it is it is easier it is easier listen in fact in my opinion i know that sin is sin but in my opinion what the bible calls the sin of the spirit have you read that there is the sin of the flesh that can have physical evidences they can have regrettable consequences immediately you are punished for it you receive embarrassment for it and it's over but what the bible calls the sin of the spirit that may not find any physical expression is more deadly listen is more dangerous it has the highest ability to choke your spiritual progress are we together now and for many believers when you begin to walk in the kingdom because you are focusing on other things like the anointing you know faith trying to understand redemption understanding the Pauline epistles understanding a lot of things you know the miraculous visions prophecies the gifts of the spirit because of your focus on these charismatic dimensions of truths or the principles of the kingdom very little attention is paid to these very deep spiritual things in fact usually we interpret them to be basic we just feel i mean that that's that, let's let's talk of great things like power miracles etc etc but as you rise in god you will discover that the text of your dealing with god will no longer be physical things are we together when god begins to deal with you at a mature dimension you will find out that his concentration will be the motivation behind everything he's not as interested um, in the physical expression of it as it is the root cause the motivation behind everything that you do if you're following me say amen and so i found out that the root cause of all of these things not most of them all of them is in one word one simple word it's called self-centeredness we call it self but the word is self-centeredness not selfishness self-centeredness everybody say it self-centeredness this is the root cause of sin any kind this is the root cause of any expression of the flesh in fact it is the doorway to the flesh finding expression when you are studying the spirit man and the man of the flesh 
it's impossible for you to study the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh without understanding the foundation listen the bible says the axe is laid at the root of the tree so when jesus is dealing with a matter he does he forgets about the expressions and goes to the root of the tree and attempts to hit it right there because when the root is destroyed then all the leaves will dry off naturally are we together now self-centeredness our human nature has been so designed that the motivation listen subconsciously behind every activity we do on earth is to find a way of gratifying our desires be it pleasures be it a sense of ambition whatever it is and that is not wrong in itself except for the fact that in God's economy listen please if at any point you are found pursuing anything that does not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom and the enthronement of Christ experientially that entire activity is useless are we together now listen I have discovered as I study the Bible and I've read my Bible a number of times every story captured in scripture was only captured because of the appearance of that story with respect to Jesus and his purposes many things happened during different dispensations but certain stories were omitted because they did not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom are we together so every story that found its way to the bible only found its way because of the alignment of that story to the purposes of the kingdom that means in god's economy please listen the degree to which you are featured at any given dispensation is the degree to which your life and everything about your life can contribute to enthroning christ are we together now so if the let's say the history of the church in zaria is to be written from 2014 to 2016 if the holy ghost were to inspire men to write you will find out that many important things that happen in zaria will not be recorded there are we together god will only focus on the activities that were centered around his kingdom when you study i mean people who have read archaeology and history and all of that you will know that concurrently at the point certain things were being recorded in scripture certain historical things were happening at that same time but the bible did not see the need to include them because they had no contribution in the understanding of christ and his purposes are we together now so if god is going to write a little story about your life you will think he will write when you went to the market you will think he will write when you went to abu anything that cannot relate to his purposes in your life will not be captured are you getting what i'm saying now this brothers and sisters is the foundation of our work with god and this state i just explained to you is the greatest enemy of the flesh the flesh thrives upon ownership the flesh thrives upon um personal ambition listen listen you have to understand this if you want to be spiritual so the bible says in first john chapter 2 when you read from verse 16 he says love not the world this is john the apostle now teaching us he says love not the world neither the things listen that are in the world he didn't say don't have them 15 it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world right he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then he breaks down these things into three categories for all that is in the world 16 the lust of the flesh category one the, the challenges that you experience by reason of having a material body. The limitations that you are bound to experience because you possess a body. Number two, 
he says the lust of the eyes then number three the pride of life he says is not of the father but is of the world so john the beloved having been mentored directly by jesus christ and understood the 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 very essence of the kingdom life is teaching us in his epistle and he's saying look if you want to be spiritual people you must come to a point where this self must be destroyed trying to trying to do physical things to address jealousy address sin address this all those things will only lead to legalism and religion the core motivation behind every one of these things believe me brothers and sisters is self-centeredness self-centeredness the need to see yourself exalted that's why we fight if you don't call me apostle i fight you why because self self wants to be glorified that's why we want titles are we together now seeing then that we are in this world but not of the world there must be a mechanism for us to be able to effectively take advantage of all the tools that have been prepared before us without being contaminated by their effects in our spirit tools such as prosperity tools such as influence are we together now tools such as the anointing all of these are tools but then there must be a foundational build up so that while we engage constantly in this earth using these tools we shield ourselves from the effect that using these things outside of this understanding creates on people so there is something money will do to you if your motivation is wrong are we together now that is dangerous there is something anointing will do to you when your motivation is wrong being prosperous with a self-centered understanding is the recipe for destruction being anointed with a self-centered mentality is a recipe for destruction are we together self let me show you something apostle james was teaching us something and he um, when I when I when I saw it uh, for me it, it, it touched me um, was that that's that's not not um, not James help me Holy Spirit second Timothy please give us second Timothy that should be Timothy right second Timothy 3 second Timothy 3 I think I'm right second Timothy 3 please give it to us from verse 1 to 4 it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come verse 2 for men shall be what lovers of their are you seeing this now men shall be lovers of their own selves and as a result many other things will follow because they are lovers of their own self they will be covetous they will be boasters. They will be proud. Do you understand the context of that scripture now? The foundation is lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves is not a point. It is the reason why these other things will happen. Because men shall be lovers of them own, their own selves. That love for themselves will make them covetous. So when they see somebody else's thing, they say, ah, this person does not deserve it it should be mine it should be me are we together then it says boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful ingratitude god you tried but you can do more unholy uh-huh without natural affection truth breakers false accusers look at them incontinent fierce rageful why are you touching my reputation do you not know i am apostle joshua selman lovers of themselves so that aggression is not a family thing this is what is leading to it 
why you are angry with everybody despisers of those that are good can you imagine that a man can love himself to a point that he despises good people verse 4 traitors heady high minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of now the key word there is more than the key word is not pleasure the key word is not God the key word is more than more than it's like a meter your love for pleasure gets to a point where it moves beyond its jurisdiction and overrides to a point where your love for God is subject to your love for things your love for cars your love for houses your love for all of this self-centeredness the need the craving to be on the scene the need the craving to be the epicenter of everything the need for recognition the need for honor the need to occupy the position of God listen this is what happened to Lucifer I will ascend to the stars I will be like the most high that was the manifesto of Lucifer and while he said that for the first time God would find somebody in heaven who was not aligned to his purposes it was no longer about the program of God it was Lucifer I will be I'm not interested whether I'm sent on errand I want to be like the most high and he was charged with treason and the Bible says there was war in heaven and Lucifer was judged and was casted down this attitude is best described in the story of the prodigal son listen let me tell you how you know you are self-centered the language of self-centeredness is me myself when when you no longer care the consequences of your pleasure on others and on the kingdom regardless of who suffers it let me get what i want is self-centeredness god is helping someone tonight you are not happy because i'm talking about you and me self-centeredness believe me is the root of sin self-centeredness is the root of these attributes of the flesh that so destroy us they are the weights the bible says we should lay aside but you don't say i will stop jealousy uh -uh. they are effects the cause for that is a life of self-centeredness brothers and sisters look at me is the reason why some of you here looking at me even if you have to kill to make money you will do it why not because you are not a christian something in you listen let me tell you what self-centeredness does it creates an imaginary pressure and mounts that pressure on you and you keep pushing yourself to do say and be things that are unnecessary because you believe that your sense of worth is tied to those things that's why we do very stupid things self-centeredness is why pastors fight themselves it's why business people fight themselves it's why a husband and a wife cannot live in peace because they are self-centered everybody brings his idea it has to be my way that's another language of self-centeredness my way it must be my way listen the moment you find yourself whether saying or being driven by these motivations i want to glorify myself my pleasure it must be my way then you know that self-centeredness is eating you up there are people here who think it's just a temperament issue they say it's just my personality type that that is complete nonsense don't let the devil fool you that is that is self-centeredness the core the very control button of evil in your life are we together there are people here you've been trained to have things happen your way if it is not your way to hell with it 
that motivation has driven us into all sorts of things when when um, we were being taught evangelism in the seminary this is what happened how many of you have heard of something called four spiritual laws one green pamphlet right that's a very good book because from the first page they will show a man's heart in an arrow and then they show a chair inside then they show you sitting there that's exactly that's the clearest description of self-centeredness the god of your own self now let me tell you something the devil is smart he angles self-centeredness so it does not exactly look like you are taking the place of god do you understand it's very subtle so you think i love god i pray when i sin i run to god that's the point you are not running to god because you love him you are running to god because of fear that you think that sin has opened a door for something to happen to you is still you i want to go to heaven is still you it looks spiritual but it's still you are you seeing you are still self-centered that is spiritual and you are mentioning heaven does not mean that it's of god when it is about you are we together so i'm trying to walk in holiness so that um, i mean i won't do this if this lady waves me i don't even want to look at her face because by doing that god will see me it's still self-centeredness it's just a more religious form of it it's still self-centeredness are we together i'm preparing a nice message and i'm praying in tongues fasting three days dry but the reason is so that everybody who comes for koinonia will know that there is a man of god a, a spiritual form of self the moment it is for you for your glory for your reputation let me tell you i can tell you how self-centered we are because of how much we we fight to make things work in our life you see the way you take the issue of your success too personal as if your name is on the line itself it says for i've been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me are we together watch this if the come sam if this is sam's handkerchief now i love sam with all my heart if this is sam's handkerchief and it falls now i love him and i love the handkerchief but i do not think i will be so distracted to run and come and pick this handkerchief are we together if the falling of the handkerchief becomes so personal that my reputation is tied to it is it really sam's handkerchief it's mine i'm trying to claim it that's what we do with our lives the level to which we are forcing ourselves to make it and force ourselves to walk the way we take the issue of our personal success so personal as if our world will crumble the way we guard our name with such fragility is a sign that we are self-centered that level of investment cannot just be for god we are doing it for ourselves thank you okay let us are we together When people become overconscious of their reputation, it's self-centeredness. It's self-centeredness. When God began to reveal these things to me, I was amazed. And I said, my God, that means who is free? Who truly is free? I looked at my own life and I said, my God, imagine how many times I've been caught up with these things. Well-meaning, sincere, very sincere you see the key to walking with god is to tremble at his word and be open when you stand before god and foolishly excuse yourself it is still self-centeredness so when the word of god is coming many of us just tap ourselves and like wow i hope they are hearing are you joking this is a message for everybody it's a message you should sit down and have a sober reflection upon look at your life and see the motivation behind the things you are doing 
and you will see the uncomfortable truth that you have to admit tonight that you have been self-centered absolutely self-centered i know you say it is for him but the truth it is is that you only say it as a cliche but in reality it is for you self-centeredness there's so many things that have happened in the body of Christ that look spiritual and looks as if we are doing it for God when the scribes and the Pharisees caught the woman in adultery listen they were scholars they were dragging her to Jesus you would think they were so passionate about Moses and keeping the law. They were looking for a way to destroy the ministry of Jesus. So they did not care who was the scapegoat that be used, that was being used. Let me tell you something about self-centeredness. Self self-centeredness is an expression of wickedness because in an attempt to get your desire, you do not care who suffers and you do not care what goes wrong in the life of anybody. It's the hallmark of self-centeredness when my desire becomes a passion that whatever suffers in the process whether God or man is none of my business that's why people kill to get political positions they don't mind they go to a herbalist and he says bring five children and they go and steal the hard-end children of five families slaughter them while they are slaughtering these children they don't care all they are seeing is the office the apex i tell you that's where it comes from self-centeredness when a man leaves his wife and goes to carry another prostitute and travel is self-centeredness it's not just pleasure it's self-centeredness are we together when somebody bribes in the office and corners billions of naira into his pocket and returns back rejoicing calling himself a rich man it is not just money it is self-centeredness because that somebody's salary in his pocket he does not care that somebody has a wife and children he does not care all he's concerned about is let me get this is it not how we all are how many times have we not paid attention to the effect of our pursuit on the advancement of the kingdom and the well-being of the people oh let me talk to you and I, I say this please don't take this personal but I want to talk to you and 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 do you know do you know sincerely speaking the worst the, the worst victims of this are ladies sisters say amen that's right because of your emotional nature and your cravings to have your desires met I've seen ladies who don't care what goes wrong provided they get it if you tell a lie to get the withdrawn money no problem let me just wait if I must corner somebody to buy the iPhone 6 iPhone 7 whichever one no problem we are more concerned about the arrival of our desires regardless of what suffered for it to arrive that's the apex of self-centeredness have you not seen visitors who come to your house they come to beg rice and you tell them honestly i just have one mudu and you would think they'll be sympathetic and say oh i know if it's one mudu it's okay you also say hey, but we, i can still have it you see people like that and at a point you just say okay no problem let me just give you and you give them and they collect they say thank you and they are going we are like that we are laughing but that's how we are so says the word of God we are spiritual but he's helping us to rise that's what will make someone come and see someone's food the last meal and just eat it and pour water in the plate and keep it you were hungry but you never believe that someone else may have a desire and as far as your do you know let me tell you something brothers and sisters i have worked among people leadership has opened me up to people there are people whose hearts are bad not because they are bad people themselves 
the, 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 the appetite to getting their lost satisfied is very terrible anything that will make it happen let it happen if God will suffer to hell with him are we together yeah so when a pastor sits down and tells people all of you bring five five hundred thousand and does not care that this person is a student and it's not even earning up to 5,000 and says, look, you better use your faith. Bring your 500,000. It looks spiritual and people claim it's for God. It's not for God. When it is for God, you follow God's way. God has a system. Are we together? Yeah. Someone was talking to me, um, I think some weeks ago, and he was just talking about churches and all of that. And then he told me a few things. He was just mentioning different churches and I looked at him I said I want to ask you a question I said why are you talking about these things and he said no 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 it's not like I have any problem I say you do are you kidding me you do because the God you claim to be serving who you are defending so personally is quiet so I wonder why you who is supposed to be his representative is so personal about the issue Yes, I know the lady wore trousers, but why have you taken it so personal? It's like a mission you gave yourself. Are you really sure you are doing that for God? Okay, the lady covered her hair and does not wear trousers. What is your own business? We do a lot of things that look spiritual, but brothers and sisters, the foundation of it is self. Self. The need for self. So we fight jealousy ladies brothers jealousy whenever you see someone with something nice something in you reacts jealousy self-centeredness it would have been me why should this lady be having this when did she i mean can you imagine this guy wanting to marry her ah come on something is wrong there is a story we must tell the brother self-centeredness how about preachers we love crowds like this. We claim it's for the glory of God. But underlying it is our desires. That's why pastors put pressure on members. They come up with every kind of business schemes to force ministry to work. When you see the way they are putting pressure, this cannot be of God. It's too personal. Why don't you let God take charge of his own kingdom? Kononia is quiet this night. Myself. For me. So we go to pray. Lord, I trust you for a car. And let me tell you something. <laughs> My God. You can spiritualize. Do you know, I love the word because Jesus is the word. And the Bible says the word can discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Father, give me a car for your glory. And then he says, since it's for my glory, walk with my own timing. And he said, no, Lord, give me a car now for your glory. And God is saying, no, it's for my glory. Let me control the timing. I say, Lord, you, I force you by sowing a seed. Give me a car now. It's for your glory. And God said, just remove the for your glory. And say, give me a car now. Before I know what to do with you. <laughs> we think, we think because we are saying for your glory. It is spiritual. Listen, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, the unrestfulness in our approach to life is a sign that we don't want to fail because our ego is so tied to the failure. Are you getting that? Five o'clock, people wake up in every city while they are praying jesus i thank you this is a beautiful day what they are saying in the spirit is scapegoat how are you I'm, I'm awake today i hope i can use you today to please achieve my goals amen that's what they thought they did that's what they call devotion to ease the guilt and then they begin their work they do everything that they do and then they come back and say god i don't know why you are not doing this you have to do this and then you will take the glory we, we, we cap our self-centeredness with that statement. 
be glorified. Be glorified is not just a statement. Be glorified is a state. Where you no longer are embarrassed about the outcomes of your life. The, the reason why you are responsible over them is not the fear of failure again. It's not the embarrassment. You have, you have, you have, you have died. You have died to your ambitions. It's about him. If koinonia does not work, it's no longer about Joshua Selman's ego to say, I would, maybe this guy is backsliding. Are you seeing? So the fear of being taught to be backsliding will now drive me to go and fast and pray and buy messages. I will think I am growing spiritually, but it's self-centeredness. That's why some of you came for koinonia this night. I know you love God. But the truth about it is that that's not the reason. Let me tell you how you know we are self-centered. Whenever we do not get our desires, our responses become ugly. Five minutes before your desire, you were trusting that the woman will not die. Lord, I know you. I take you by your word for your glory. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I am your servant. And then the person, the person dies. And all of a sudden, your ego is on the line. No, 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 no. Let's raise this person back to life. And you try and try and nothing happens. And your ego is on the line. I watch it happen to people. You prophesy to somebody, in the name of Jesus, you are going to get a job. And you see the pressure on you. Men of God prophesy like that and they go back and say, Oh God, please, let this word come to pass. It looks spiritual. It is your word. So you are in such a passion to bring it to pass. So that they can say, Apostle prophesied. And like he said, it came to pass. Is God helping us this night? Are you learning something? Self-centered. Brothers and sisters, are you seeing the damage it has caused to us? Sister, are you seeing that this is why if you are not careful, you may not marry the will of God? Because although in your prayer, you are saying, Lord, it's only your will. All that is talk. In reality, you have already painted the picture of the man, the necessary and sufficient condition to say yes to any man. You have painted it. It's unbending no amount of preaching no matter how pathetic will move your mind the hardness of your heart has been glued to that image must be a millionaire then you now add and say and spiritual too just to make you feel so it no longer is about the will of god same thing for people getting jobs listen listen let me tell you don't laugh about this it's a very serious thing do you know why Jesus pleased the Father? It was not because of his miracles. It was because he was a walking expression of a body that has been dedicated for the will of God to find expression unrestrained. Here are the things that Jesus said himself. Let's look at a few scriptures. Jesus himself said this. John 17 verse 1, please give it to us media. Let's hurry up. I want us to pray. John 17 verse 1. John 17 verse 1 these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven father the hour is come glorify now thy son many of us will stop there and then the next thing we we'll add is amen glorify now Joshua Selman give him money give him fame give him increase but Jesus put a comma there and said that thy son may also glorify you in other words lord it's not necessary to have to use me to prove a point but simply because i am passionate about seeing your glory revealed use me as the vehicle for that revelation ha. there are things i know that can touch the heart of god are we together there are things i know by my experience with God that touches the heart of God more than faith believe me more than acting out spiritual things is a heart that is completely surrendered to glorify God 
Jesus, look at Jesus. Who do being equal with God. Equal with God. I know what Jesus would have prayed at this point. Father, remember that our glory. Make sure you never forget it. I'm only here for three and a half years. I'm coming back. Make no mistakes. No new election in heaven. I am here. My position that I came to become a scapegoat doesn't mean you should take me for granted. I'm calling on you. You better answer me. Jesus submitted himself and said, glorify me so that you will be glorified. Brothers and sisters, this is the language of a life where Christ sits upon the throne of that personality. Do you know this is what Jesus came to give us? There's been a confusion in the body of Christ about Old Testament and New Testament. Let me tell you, if you meet Jesus today, he will never talk to you about Old Testament or New Testament. Whether you are under grace or law is nonsense. He's going to ask you one question. Who is seated at the throne of your heart? Jesus came to deliver us. The very gospel was designed to take us away from a life of self-centeredness. Not from a life of works. No. From a life of self-centeredness. The motivation behind our activities. Being us to a life that is glued to glorifying Christ. Brothers and sisters, I don't care whether you are in the Old Testament or New. You are not born again if Christ is not seated at the throne of your heart. I don't care how many times you have recited salvation prayer. The essence of the coming of Jesus is not just to bring a new order. The essence of the coming of Jesus is to align men back to the purposes of the kingdom. Where Christ himself will be seated. The Lord gave me a revelation this morning. Both the elder brother of the prodigal son and the younger brother committed the same sin. The only difference was one executed it openly, whereas the other one kept it, which is an example of the two kinds of believers we have. Both of them were tired of the leadership of their father. One had the courage to express it. One kept it. They wanted ownership. And here's what the first one said. The first one said, give me. That self-centeredness there. Give me. I know you gave me access, but I don't want access. Because the access is in your name. I now want it in my name. Give it to me. The younger, the elder brother did not say give it to me. But it was in his heart. Listen, I'll prove it to you. When the prodigal son returned back. And they were celebrating him. What happened to the elder brother? He became angry. And this is what he said father i have served you all these years you have not even given me a small um you know a small animal cattle to slaughter for me and my friends you see the offense the self-centeredness was still there in other words lord i have served you will you not reward me see this is the imbalance of the doctrine of covenant that I always balance. I've been insulted many times because of this. I tell believers, in terms of our personal work, we are not in a covenant with God. It's a relationship. It is only when you talk about kingdom advancement and now bringing the operation of the principles of the kingdom, then you bring covenant. Are we together? Because you see, Jesus gave a parable to explain that. In the morning, he saw some people idle and he called them to go and work in the farm. Is that true? He negotiated money with them. That's covenant. Terms. You work, I give you a denary. Later in the afternoon, he saw some people idle. And he said, why sitters thou idle? He said, no, my employers. He said, go. Based on relationship. They went because they loved him and they believed him. There was no arrangement that he was going to pay them. Even till the 11th hour, one hour to close time he still saw somebody he said go now when he started rewarding them see how he rewarded them he started with the covenant people since my agreement with you was one denary take and then he called those who went because they loved him and said since you were in this farm to promote my interest i will now decide what to give you and a person who worked for one hour received the same reward with somebody who started in the morning and the guys were angry they said no something is wrong and he said what you negotiated with me 
the same way you are saying lord i will serve you in ushering department my husband must come before koinonia ends thank you for that that's a covenant you will get the husband but what if god wanted to give you a husband plus an anointing and a destiny those two you robbed yourself because the motivation listen I know there are times we can tie things to God but brothers and sisters let me tell you the higher you rise with God it no longer matters whether you get results or not it now becomes his glory for your glory I will do anything to behold you as my king One more time. For your glory, I will do anything just to see to be called you as my king. I want to be where you are. got to be where John 4 34 Jesus said this John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus said my meat is not to build a ministry he didn't say my meat is to prove that I am savior look at this do you know that every time they challenge Jesus about his his messianic persona did you see the way he was not under pressure to defend himself I know what I would have done, Joshua Selman. Ah, I'll tell media, make a montage and prove to these people, gather all the miracles that have happened and tell them, are you stupid? Is that not the power of God? But I mean, they met Jesus. The woman was caught in adultery. Jesus would have said, but you guys are foolish. Don't you know that I can do word of knowledge? In fact, the name of the husband, the name of the man that slept with her is Rabbi Benjamin. Where is he come out? And people will clap and say, my God. Hi, Rabbi, you are the one. But Jesus did not see a need for that. He was more concerned about that woman. But he answered them in a dangerous way. Instead of saying, I am the only one qualified to cast stones. He said, he who has no sin, cast the first stone. In other words, whoever among you fits that definition, cast the first stone. All of them left and she was left with the only person who was to cast the stone. He said, since I am qualified, I choose to let you go. Go and sin no more. That's Jesus for you. That's the Jesus we try to preach about that we don't understand. We shout and spit on people trying to preach him. Yet we don't pay attention to understand him. Are we together? The essence of Christianity, brothers and sisters, is not legalism and religion. The essence of Christianity is not even evangelism. The essence of Christianity is not heaven. The essence of Christianity is not prosperity and money. The essence of Christianity is not ministry and healing. The essence of Christianity is a life through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, replaced from a life of self-centeredness to a life that is absolutely committed to seeing Christ enthroned first in your life and throughout every territory regardless of what your own achievement is while you do that is nonsense it's only secondary listen when you get this thing I'm telling you you will see the power of God in your life I can tell you this is why many people are not anointed I've said it the key to the anointing is not just fasting and prayer I've seen people fast for hundreds of days. You fast with yourself at the center of your heart. You have only succeeded in doing a good weight loss program. I assure you, you are not going to touch the anointing. A heart that is dedicated to seeing his glory come. Okay, Lord. This is the lady I want to marry. Oh, I like her. But thy will. Everybody say thy will. 
be done say thy will this is the language of a christ-centered life lord i want to go to london it's always been my desire however i realize that my life is not my own the bible says i've been bought with a price you don't act as if jesus didn't finish paying for you he paid for you completely in fact whether you are born again or not you are still his property the earth is the lord's and the fullness therein right so whether through sovereign ownership or through the manifestation of the love of his son you still belong to him listen to what jesus said my meat this is what moves my life my nourishment my satisfaction is to do the will of who him that sent me and to finish it i am more concerned about doing the will than enjoying any blessing that comes while doing the will so if in the course of doing the will of god i operate certain principles and i enjoy blessings while i'm wearing the nice suit while i'm driving the nice car my gaze is set on seeing him glorified so prosperity no longer has the power to distract me because i met it on my way to pleasing god whether or not i met it i am determined to still finish pleasing him so paul says what then shall separate us from the love of god look at this the apostle who brought himself back to life they killed Paul. Immediately they went, he came back to life and shook himself. My God, a man who wrote two thirds of the gospel, this is what he said, for, for me to live is Christ. I don't know for you, but for me to live is Christ. Then even if I die, listen, Paul was not saying if I die as a result of armed robbery and they shoot me. If you die as a result of armed robbery, it's not gain. It's a loss because one, you are going to hell. Number two, the kingdom is not advanced through that. But that Paul was trying to say, look, my passion is to pour myself as a drink offering. And regardless of what personal results come to me or otherwise, it is secondary. So compared to the fulfillment of God's program, your marriage is secondary. That marriage that has topped the prayer list of miracle service every week and then later the number 27 is now god your will be done exclamation mark after you have written everything and vented out your lust he sees he looks from heaven the holy spirit sees our motivations while we pray he's watching us while we do the things that we try to do he's watching us while we gossip about people you would think it's because of a passion to see them improve it's simply a system to show a weakness in them so that you can justify your own that you are not willing to hand over to the cross let me tell you if you want to love god he will love me for what i'm teaching you this night it's the key to make spiritual men a life that is completely out and you see some of us we come from cultures that the system of the culture by default makes you self-centered are we together we come from cultures where the system of the culture by default was designed to make you self-centered they look at you and say promise how old are you and they say uh, maybe I'm, I'm 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 32 or i'm 30 or i'm 35 and they say ah, you should have a car by now ah, what are you saying you should have a car and have a five children and this and then that challenges you and you go back and say lord they are insulting you god said they are not insulting me if they are insulting me i will react i'm not offended i said god me i'm offended i'm serving you <laughs> you see we create all kinds of theological messages let me tell you if he's the one taking the glory why are you taking the shame listen whoever is taking the glory should be the person taking the shame please help me why do you claim god is taking the glory but you always take the shame are we together take it half on me now. see how we pack the shame and we claim that we're giving god the glory we are not there's a song in my spirit and the shout of the earth will be your praise god forever and the light unto all 
will be your wonderful name. All the glory, Lord, is yours. God forever, all the glory is yours. Listen, Lord Jesus, if I remain barren like this, I give you praise. I will never stop serving you, but it is your reputation. So let the pressure go to him. Are we together? The moment people look at you and say, are you a woman or a man? Direct the shame to him. But you sit down and absorb the shame and say, God, give me a man child or I die. And God says, this thing you are doing is not for my glory. It's spiritual. You are sincere. I'll show you why many people never get rich. They think the key is doing business. They think the key is after all of these things, God looks at your heart and says, no, sir. You are better off without it than you are with it. Because when it comes to your heart, it will possess you and tear you. So you see that it's not all about imparting anointing. Apostle, I'm not seeing crowds in my ministry. I know if you speak a word, the doors will open. And here I'm, I'm just looking at you in your sincerity. But you dared your fellowship members that you are coming to collect power like a charm and say, watch me. When I come back, you will see what will happen to this church. Your self-centeredness drove you for hours on the road, sweating and praying, feeling spiritual, and you could not wait to see me. The moment you received that anointing, whether or not you thought you received it, you were in a hurry. And you say, from today, don't play with me anyhow. Apostle laid hands on me. See the picture. Aren't you surprised at what you call the sudden change when people get results? They never change suddenly. They only manifested it. I told you, the prodigal son did the same thing with the elder brother. We keep, I used to accuse the, the younger one and leave the elder brother, but I found that two of them were only different versions of the same thing. One was quiet with his own while the other one executed it. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. We are going to pray. I like us to read it. This was Jesus at Gethsemane. Listen, listen, listen. There are two things here that we must understand. We are going to read it. But the first thing you need to understand is Jesus had his own will. It is okay to have your will. It is okay to have your desires. Only that your desires must come under divine scrutiny. And if need be, give way for the will of God to prevail. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yeah. Your desires are only worthy of execution when they find themselves in harmony with the divine will of God. If at any point your desires, no matter how intelligently constructed, if there is a difference from your desires and God's desires, one must bow. And for many of us, largely, it's been God's desires bowing. So salary leads you to the job. Are we together? You look at the lady and say, Kai, I like the way this lady speaks. Don't you think she'll be a nice wife? You see, let me tell you something, brothers. Let me give you a frank advice. If you keep being carnally minded, I give you two guarantees. Guarantee number one, you will miss out on the will of God. Two, you are going to pay for your foolishness when it has to do with marriage. You have to take your eyes away from carnality and focus on God. I saw that lady if you go eight. Be careful. Be very, very careful. I know what I'm saying doesn't make sense to many of us, but you ask many people who are sadly regretting missing the will of God. There is no price that is too great to walk in the will of God. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Here's the language of spiritual.
find expression in our lives. Nevertheless, not my will. I have a will. I have a desire. But nevertheless, not my will. Lord, your will be done. According to my desire, I plan to own a house in every state in Nigeria. But Lord, I bring that will to your scrutiny. Does this fit in the master plan of your blueprint for my life? And if at any point it's not part of it, I drop my ego. I drop my ego. These are men and women who will be used by God in this end time. Let me tell you, those who will be used in this end time are not just those who understand revelations and mysteries. Because the Bible says knowledge will cease, prophecy will cease. Those who will carry strange mantles in this season are men and women who God can obstruct their life at any point without having no need to explain it. There are too many of us who put God like a defense. Lord, tell me why. I should leave Zaria now and we put our hands in our pocket. I'm waiting for you. And then you have to come and God says, all right, uh, take it easy. The reason is because I have seen something. I, say, no, 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 I don't understand. Clarify. When you make God that slow to birth his purposes through you, there are dimensions you will never enter. And the spirit drove Jesus. He didn't say, Jesus, are you in harmony with me? Let's go to the wilderness. You are going to get power there. If you want God to explain to you the reason why he's doing everything in your life, your life will be too slow for impact. You have to start moving and let your mind catch up and say, Lord, your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil. I don't have to wait until I understand you are too good to destroy me. You are too good to destroy me. So whether you are in the valley of the shadow of death, rather than sitting down and, and just talking and say, God, you serve Kai. If I were an unbeliever, by now, I would have done something. God, do you know it's because I'm a Christian that I'm here? It's not like I don't know where Babalao is. All those stupid statements that we make when we are under fire, is a sign that the fire is roasting our self-centeredness. That's why the Bible says, when we walk through the fire, you won't rush it. It has to burn off that dross so that when you come out like gold, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Five years after marriage, no child, and people come. And you know, people are so naughty, they can say something and say, ah, Madam, you are serving God. What is all this one? At least go, go for koinonia now. Eh? Apostle is anointed. He can, is it pride? What is stopping you? And then after listening to those things, you can go back and cry and say, Oh God, give me a child or I die. No. You say, Father, a child or no child, let me tell you one truth. Me and you, we are stuck to air forever. A child is too small a reason for me to put my relationship with you on the line. How many people have seen carry over and left God? They say, What, what is the use? The day I served God, I failed. When I didn't serve God, I succeeded. And you hear preachers stand on stage and preach nonsense. Nonsense! Is that all your life is about? Why do you compare your relationship with God with academics? Is it ever a match? Why do you compare your relationship with God with marriage? Why do you compare your relationship with God with a job? Is, is our self-centered mundane pursuit that reduce God to be equal with these things. God will never, I cannot reduce God to the issues of my life, the petty issues of my life and say, God, you are uh, uh, me. Ask him, ask him, you are spiritual people. Will I ever open my mouth and tell God he's not faithful? Why? That what happened? Just because there was no tea to eat, you, to, tea to drink and bread to eat, you carry the Bible and run around heaven. Oh God, are you giving me tea or I should tear my Bible? Is this your word? And God says, now nah, well, what is all this one? Just because of tea you are shouting? Self-centeredness. 
This is why the anointing does not work in the life of people. This is why God does not lift certain people. Inside, outside, online, you are hearing me and the Lord is speaking to you. Can your will bend to the will of God? Look at me. If your will cannot bend to the will of God, you are carnal. It's not an insult. It's a description. You are carnal and self-centered. Let me tell you how you know your will has bent to the will of God. When sacrifice no longer becomes an issue in your life. If God says, Joshua Selman, remove the sim in your phone now and give somebody this phone. I don't say, oh God, see, let's be real. Me, I'm trying. Let me, I, I want to show you why many of us are carnal. The ease with which you release things is a measure of how much you are self-centered. And I'm not talking of small things. Your tongue singlet, God says, give. Say, ah, after all, I was going to even burn it. So let me give this guy. That's not giving. God will never ask you to give what they gave you. He will ask you to give what you worked for. He's very smart. If he says, if he, he, look, let me tell you something. This our God is powerful. He will allow your emotions to be connected with the gift. Then he will ask you to release it. God will never ask you to release what you are not emotionally connected to. Because it doesn't make sense. The essence is not the giving. The essence is your heart giving him space to find expression. When Satan comes to you, he studies the things that have not been surrendered to God. That becomes his weapon of mass destruction in your life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not. If the Lord asks me now and says, Son, let this be your last sermon as Joshua Selman. In the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, I'm standing before him. I will not lie to you. When I drop this mic, no committee council meeting will make me pick a mic again to preach. I will cry because I have a lot of passion for this. But I love him more than that. If you like, carry placard, bring back apostle. Move around with it and say, no, you must come back. The demon that manipulated your mind, you must come back. I said, I understand. You are human. If I were you, I would do the same thing. But I'm not going back again. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, listen. I have laid down things in my life you will not believe. It's a price. Some of us, finances, whenever money is leaving you, even if you are keeping it, I don't mean you are giving it, just that you are keeping it's not in your pocket, you feel the pain just that is somewhere aside from your pocket that is the apex of carnality materialism and self-centeredness joined together god does not want your money what does he do with it god does not want your clothes he wants your heart because when he finds your heart he finds everything sisters let me tell you why some of you are not rising at the pace you want your life is full of so much carnality it's not an insult you love god but the truth about it is there are many shrines and idols in your heart you have surrounded them so much you would dare not even allow the voice of god interrupt anything lord don't come and interrupt my program i have my life all planned out same thing with the brothers that's why people are confused in nigeria they don't know what to do with their lives they claim they are hearing God. They claim they are walking with God. But their lives are very clear that they are moved by insecurities and sociological pressures to show they are successful. Are we together? The quest to buy a car. The quest to get married. The quest to have children. You have all girls. And somebody is asking you, Ah, Kilo Day, we need girls and boys. So, and you now turn and land the warning on your wife. Say, madam, you had that thing, please. I'm tired of this embarrassment. Oh yeah, let's pray. Lord, give us a child for your glory. No, give us a child for my ego. My masculinity is being insulted and I want to use you to cure it. And God says, no way. I'm not that cheap. Brothers and sisters, this night, I want you to come to a place where the anthem of your life is nevertheless not my will but your will be done you find peace in your life i like
like Job. Job lost everything in his life. As if that were not enough. You can lose any other thing if you have your health, you are okay. He lost his health. Dogs would come and lick the source of Job. Do you know what that means? Imagine seeing Ali Kodangote on the streets of Zaria and these dogs that roam around licking him and then his wife standing by him with a dark, dirty wrapper. And people look and say, Job, you? Where were the friends you helped? And Job sat down there and the wife was so attached to her reputation and she said, Job, curse God and die. And Job said, uh-uh, uh-uh. Though he slay me, though he slay me i know i've been embarrassed my ego has been stung till there's no ego yet will i trust him all the days of my appointed time i will wait until my change comes the three hebrew boys said oh king let it be known unto you that our god will deliver us we know that there is a provision in him to deliver us however even if aha uh -huh, your faith equation does not call that one you call even if doubt hey, nothing my husband must come december lord i tell you i've sown seed i am even taking communion please don't give god a headache with all these stories save yourself all that immaturity say lord i give you praise i'm showing you the secret to peace there are men and women who have found peace you see them rejoicing and they are happy because they have found a system in god that it is more beneficial for him to be glorified than for your agenda to find the expression it's not about the crowd it's about his kingdom it's not about Joshua Selman it's about his kingdom I bring you the message that represents the epicenter of the gospel that has been misunderstood even by preachers who preach the New Testament what they preach in the New Testament is they say, okay, now there's no more works. Jesus has done everything. Enjoy. That's complete nonsense. It's an incomplete truth. The key is he brought you to a state where you no longer are self-centered. The motivation behind everything you do is now for his glory. There's nothing that gives my life joy as that name, be that word be glorified. Lord be glorified. It's my statement every time. When I pray, all I tell him is be glorified. Be glorified. Preparing for miracle service, Lord, I thank you. I love you with all my heart. Your people are coming. They are trusting that you will use me. And Lord, I thank you. Be glorified. Every time I stand on this stage and I look at you, believe me. I have no business trying to impress anybody. His glory. His glory. That's why I do the things that I do. We just rounded up our external ministration for the year and it's been a busy year. Sometimes while we're traveling, when we're on transit, I just sit down. The last meeting was last week and we had to leave, I think 4.30 in the morning to catch up with our flights to Lagos. And while we're going in the night, I was saying, what is all this? Why am I risking my life like this? I didn't sleep. I wanted to rest my head and the next thing it was time and I had to what am I looking for ministry am I so dull that I cannot write a book can't I do a webinar are there not intelligent ways to make myself omnipresent the internet has helped to make omnipresence possible I can be everywhere so what what the heck is all this traveling around and all of a sudden you just remember for his glory for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory I will do anything just to see To behold you as my king, I want to be where you are, I got to be where you are, I want to be where you are. Listen, let me preach to you this night. Some of you, the load you are carrying 
it's a demon that put it on your head that load is not from God the Bible says my yoke is easy and my burden is light your life is surrounded by too many self-inflicted worries worries that make no sense at the foundation of those worries is your self-centeredness and your desire to solve those problems for the sake of your ego but I bring you a message here's what Jesus said come on to me he didn't say discuss with me come on to me all ye that are heavy laden and are weary he says and I will give you rest I will give you rest the worry in your life is killing you sister the worry in your life is killing you there are some of us who are older than our age they look at you and they say how old are you let me guess uh, 37 you say me I'm just 25 what what made that worry added an age that was not given by God you see people worry all the time they get up in the morning they are worried ah the Bible says, which of you by worry can add one cubit this is scripture you know honestly speaking sometimes when 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 I drive around the road or when I stand I start laughing in the car I'm just laughing because I'm saying my God what made people like this how did people suddenly become like this you see a man quarreling somebody a conductor insisting that that five naira must be given and the person is refusing and then you stand somewhere someone is stealing they are catching him someone is cheating somebody in the market a lady is frowning her way to the market and you look at this and say my God who programmed us like this because when you die all these things end right now as I'm speaking an arm robber is trying to fly a fence he may die this night but he's thinking they are already calculating when you do this we will steal this one then we will run out he may die this night that's his mindset when Jesus says I will give you rest believe it there is a pastor right now who is not sleeping he's under pressure the messages I'm preaching are they new or are they still does it look like I'm growing pressure how can we multiply the members i already prophesied that we're going to have three times and now it's almost december we need like one thousand more people how can we do that your ego on the line forcing you to wake your leaders in the night in the name of leaders meeting but it's simply your ego on the line please rest prophesy to someone close to you say rest say it rest i bring you a system in the kingdom where men can hand over these self-inflicted problems look at this come sir if this guy is an arm robber watch this this is an example if he's an arm robber and you catch him stealing now i'm the policeman and i'm about, about to shoot him are we together the moment i shoot this guy and he falls to the ground is that an arm robber again that's not an arm robber are you seeing that's an innocent body that was controlled by nonsense for many years and understanding made that body jump a fence by force something else can come into that body and that body suddenly becomes a pastor it was never the body the body did not jump on the fence by itself a self-centered nature of wanting to be like the young guys too we are like the young guys the ones that have you see you see there's this craze among young people the ones who have made it let me see the designer you are wearing the watch how much hundred and how many thousand there is are you wearing versace or this and the other person said kai you see i'm tired of all this tailor tailor thing this guy that is sewing something suit is bending around i need to start dressing well and we put ourselves under pressure that's what some of you are doing now you promise yourself to wear a particular weave before Christmas. It's unnecessary. That money can pay your rent, your small house that you are, you are paying. Unnecessary things. Listen, please, I want you to write this down. The only thing that is worth your blood, the only thing that is worth your blood, listen to me, is your relationship with Jesus and if you are married, your marriage write it down these are the only two things in this life that is worth your blood worth you waking up to not sleep the only thing that is worth your blood 
is your relationship with Jesus and if you are married your marriage two things they are the only things that the Bible places so much priority onto even unto death thank you are we together I think it was last week or the week before last I sang a song I will sing it again when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in married clay, turning sinners into saints. And I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life brothers lend this don't be foolish husbands 10 years from now don't join the confusion of men who are punishing their wives and their children my ego my this all this nonsense that wrinkles men to death high blood pressure killing men they die of high blood pressure and what brought the high blood pressure is never solved oh i would never be that foolish never be that foolish this is what I'll do with my life. This is the part of the song that I really like. We'll raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. That's the reason why we are alive. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Prophesy one minute to yourself and say, I reject worry. Say it. I reject it. No, you came with culture, but I reject you. I reject self centeredness. I hand over the management of my life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Whatever God cannot do, cannot be done. No, whatever God cannot do, let no man fool you that it can be done. <laughs> Listen, listen, come. If God does not give you a wife, if you like wear suit, speak English, you can choose nonsense for yourself. The depression you are having, going online, wanting to like every lady, capturing people's pictures on your phone is nonsense. That self-centeredness on rampage. Hand over that rubbish to God and rest. If God does not give you a husband, cut walk, jump, pray in tongues, cook, you will never marry until he gives it. A man can have nothing except it is given unto you. If God does not open access to wealth, do business, buy, sell, sell cement, sell sand, do anything I assure you you will never have this thing in the kingdom is not an achievement it's a trust he said my son give me your heart God does not anoint you try to start a ministry you will be shocked that you are preaching well yet nobody will come because it has not been given everything in the kingdom is given until it is released from heaven 
you will never have it. I, the warrior of men is killing them. Listen, listen. Because of the healing ministry, I study a lot about health. Do you know I have found out? I'm not a doctor. We have doctors here. But most of the disease, what we call it disease, people put themselves in an atmosphere that destroys them. I tell you, I have come to the conclusion that aside from demonic influences, all sicknesses, all sicknesses are psychologically related. Depression. When will you come and build a house in the village and you are under pressure? You have one million naira that you would have used to plan your life but somebody has stimulated your egocentric nature and you go to the village you start building and die there have you ever gone to uk no 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 no. and you are putting yourself under pressure selling your car selling your wife selling your children to get the tp to go to uk and live like a fool at the borders go and see nigerians abroad see them under bridges when a student is here in nigeria and he's working they tell him no concentrate but when he goes abroad he can be scrubbing toilet and be schooling they say it's all right our carnal nature producing this nonsense we see in society let it change tonight please it's like a it's like something spinning men the moment you are born you enter into it it starts spinning you till death you can come out of it and you will be amazed at how people have been killing themselves by themselves i live a very happy life i'm telling you i live a very happy life when people look at me and say apostle the burden of the ministry i say me burden of the ministry you are joking i can be tired though physically speaking but maybe fatigued like frustration from ministry never anybody who tells you i'm ever frustrated in my life go and tell that person is a liar from the pit of hell i am a very very happy person whatever i don't have i keep it when koinonia started here miracle service i, I will wear a suit that can buy a bike and climb the bike are we together i will climb the bike and it will come and there will be overflow of people here i will drop from the bike and people are watching ah this apostle on a bike i mean i don't have to sit down and tell myself i know how many times a jimmy can be a witness i went to go and buy a car and god said leave this place there was a time i finished the arrangement can you imagine that embarrassment standing you are happy you are smiling about to call your people and saying i'm making it and god said what are you doing here Your ego will not allow you to leave. You say, no way. God, collect it, I will buy. And you buy it and it never gives you joy. When you insist on taking what God did not give you, he will take back something he gave you. Write it down. When you insist on taking what God did not give you, believe me, he will take back something he gave you. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, I will raise your banner high. I shine your light so bright. I sing in honor of you. You know, you know, my people have learned a lot of things working with me because they travel. Do you know there are times we've gotten to the airport, we just get to the airport and because we arrived late, we've missed our flight. They have, they have learned this, that I don't worry. If someone calls me now and says, Apostle, your house is on fire, your car is on fire, everything is on fire, your bank is on fire, I will tell them, let me finish Koinonia. When I finish, I look at it, I say, okay, so what bond? There's nothing we can recover. Glory be to God. I give you praise. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'll go back and I'll sleep. To wake up and say, ah, my life. <laughs> no, I've grown up. You know what we say? I'll say, okay, in house, sir. It'll never happen. Never happen. I'm giving you the secret of rest. Some of you are surprised. Is it really true? Because it is never a reality you have come to conceive in your mind. You are already you have acclimatized yourself to worry. You never believe that there can be such a reality. 
it is your ego self-centeredness self-centeredness please please hear me hand over your life to god I, i'm not i don't mean born again you keep hearing me say this I, handing your life to god is not reciting salvation prayer no coming to a point where you relinquish ownership lord it belongs to you nevertheless not my will but thy will be done nevertheless not my plans but your plan be done nevertheless not my desires but your desires i know the bible says he will give us the desires of our hearts but brothers and sisters he will only give you the desire that is consistent with his will so you don't coin a desire by yourself and start imposing god using scriptures like a charm to turn his hand no the desire must be consistent with his will lord do whatever you want to do with my life it's yours it truly is yours i've told him this many times koinonia belongs to him you can call me anything you want to call me it's never my ministry i don't have the power to run a ministry it belongs to him that's why he spreads it the way he wants and does with it things that are even more than my frame of wisdom i imagine how depressed i would have been if i were doing ministry by myself and my strength i live a very happy life most times when we travel for meetings they don't even know who apostle is as soon as we drop most times i'm in my polo with my earphones listening to something and they walk to mike and say good afternoon sir and then they turn to victor good afternoon and then they just see me and i can see the shock this is the thing we have been waiting for for hours at the airport there is this treasure in earthen vessels it gives me joy listen it gives me joy when i decrease because the more i decrease my problems decrease the more i decrease my worry decreases whoever is the landlord is the one who renovates the house i i, I mean let him let him handle everything he's not in me as a tenant he's in me as a landlord i give you the secret of peace quit the life of self-centeredness finances all of this I, i'm trying to do this keep your ego on the line if you ever seek prosperity let it be because you desire for his kingdom to come and mean it seriously and show it by how your current resources are advancing his kingdom if your 10 naira does not advance his kingdom your 1 billion will not advance his kingdom one gentleman came and met me and he said that um that he wanted to be to, me to pray for him he's a kingdom financier i said really he said by god's grace he wants to be giving maybe like 100 100 million to like 10 different ministries every month i said wow that's great and this guy came to my place he didn't even buy orange of 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 50 naira i i, I told him i said you will not be a kingdom financier as you can see that, that i am not looking for this but if you don't have the sense i am god's servant you believe i'm god's servant and you cannot buy orange of 50 naira right i see the shoe you are wearing i see everything you are wearing you come and you are twisting your tongue for hours telling me you want to sow 100 million your heart is not giving there's no giver in your heart so you are not going to give you are only a liar and the money will kill you if you even get it sir, it's not even, you will not get it at best you will just be comfortable god is not a fool you can choose your way and die with it but his way do you know as i'm preaching to you now when we begin to pray some of you will find out that certain sicknesses will just leave you because the foundation of you've taken panadol you've taken injection it has not left because the spirit that sponsors that thing is sitting on a mindset that is comfortable you hand over your life to god that's all absolutely that's all every time people ask you things you don't know the answer just tell them god be glorified god be praised ha, when will you buy a car now you are getting too old for my liking we give god the praise god is going to step in just diplomatically laugh and leave them your mother calls you and say don't come back home if there's no if, if there's nobody you are going to introduce ha, ha. my child are you cursed what is wrong i am your mother oh yeah i bless you go and bring a husband mommy the lord be glorified simple you enter your room and dance it away 
and dance it and let Satan see you rejoicing. Uh, you are you are a graduate, you are you have masters, you even have PhD, no job. What is wrong with you? This other guy is a smoker and he's working in NMPC. You claim to love God, uh, and even I mean you cannot even get a job anywhere. Jesus be praised, be glorified. Not in the name of Jesus. I will go about what kind of I'm tired of unbelievers mocking me. Let them mock. If you take the shame, what are you doing with the glory? He cannot take the glory and give you the shame. Whoever takes the shame should also take the glory. Rise up on your feet. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Take over. I have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to sing it from the depth of your heart hey, hey, take over take over i have come to the end of myself Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Prayer point number one, Lord. Take away this load from my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Take it away. This unnecessary pressure to prove a point. This unnecessary pressure is making me greedy. Is making me covetous. Take it away from my life. I pray Lord take this load it's depressing me I can't sleep because of it I cry alone in the night because of it I hand over everything to you Pray, pray your way to freedom. Pray your way to liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two listen you are going to wage warfare in the next two minutes against all the traits that your self-centeredness has produced listen some of you have bitter jealousy you love god but if you ever see something that is not in you 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 get resentful covetousness high-mindedness you crave for recognition you will claim you don't but it's written all over your life your appetite for recognition is to a fault you may not directly go to look for it but when they bring it the way you jump at it shows you desire it are we together what of lost lost your appetite for lost has driven you beyond imagination appetite for vain glory I am pastor this not brother this self-centeredness what of your desire to outshine others ladies you always want to be seen as a happening person it's a spirit you pride yourself 
in outshining others what of pastors the competitive jealousy that moves around men of God everybody trying to tear down another to show he is standing is self-centeredness what of all the religious activities done to command respect not just to glorify God prayers fasting look serious but motivated behind it is the desire for a name listen listen Nimrod Kush said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the issue was not the city the issue was the name everywhere the spirit of the antichrist manifested is sought self-recognition i like you to pray mention those attitudes mention those attributes and let them die in your life lift your voice don't be arrogant don't claim there's nothing to pray for selfishness lord deliver me pray open your mouth and pray jesus deliver me from lust deliver me from pride i have a bitter and a wicked heart deliver me from it i don't rejoice at the progress of others deliver me from it I'm so obsessed by my desires I don't care who gets hurt on the way deliver me oh God are you praying I have paid less attention to the needs of people it's always been about me my opinion my desire what I want are you praying hallelujah listen you are going to pray for supernatural compassion that listen beyond your desires you pay attention to the effect of your desires on the kingdom and on people don't want something so bad you don't care who dies listen listen don't go to people's houses and inconvenience them and not care whether they are being inconvenienced provided your desires are met you must have a sense of empathy you don't go to a house their resources are about finishing and you don't even have the spirituality to say no even when they offer you some things there are some things the answer is no yes cannot be the answer to everything are you hearing what i'm saying you must sustain the discipline it cannot be give me give me your hand is always open to collect there are times do you know do you know there are certain homes that sometimes i'm not saying this is the general reason but there are times i deliberately will not want to go do you know why especially some of our parents and loved ones i will not go because i know how much they honor me and sometimes they can be constrained financially are we together and i know that attempting to go there they will go out of their way maybe even borrow money to try to put things in place and i say no 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 or sometimes i take them unawares and i insist that they don't give anything maybe a cup of water just to bless the house but some of you i know that if you are functioning in this grace people will lock their houses when they see you because you will inconvenience people how many millionaires in many churches cannot testify because the day they just testify i paid a tithe of one million the pastor says see me after service the other office not the regular one and that man never rests text message all the time we need chairs in this church is God speaking to you let me know if he's talking all kinds of pressures 
the discipline to have empathy for people don't want something so bad you enter a room you want to cook your food you pour water on people's bed that's it the room you are self-centered you are more concerned about your stomach you don't care what happens to any other person there are husbands like that they never pray they never do anything the day they are going to pursue them from the office they organize night vigil everybody is seated at home peacefully the next thing you see one man of god who just enter like a thief and start singing around and he'll call everybody and nobody will sleep that night because the man has a problem but when somebody is about to die and they say ah oh, my husband let's pray say no 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 that's their business our society is full of self-centeredness that's why many husbands never enjoy their homes they claim they have experience in marriage but their self-centeredness destroys them many wives same thing many children same thing self-centeredness fools the society i like you to pray and say lord give me compassion to study the effect of my passion on others to make sure that i not only receive results but that i don't damage the destinies of people in a bid to get my desires lift your voice and pray empathy of the feeling of others the bible says for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity hallelujah listen there are some of you after this meeting you are supposed to send text messages to certain people and tell them i'm so sorry i never realized that my desire has been hurting you so bad there are people you are supposed to send them text messages are we together yeah so bad they make their bed you bring your friends and scatter their bed and you stand up and walk away you are so conscious about your desire you don't care about the feeling of anybody to hell with anything there are others your relationship too many people have suffered because of your own relationship you carry your wife or your husband to be to a house loot their food eat everything i mean come on there are others is their job don't let anything you have intentionally cause trouble and break people down it's not worth it when the election nigeria's election and the president now won jonathan did something i'm not a politician but he did something that touched my heart there were so many prophecies that had come that he will win from men of God who had had credible track records and the moment that happened he would have put his ego on the line and shed the blood of millions of Nigerians but he said no his aspiration is not worth the blood of Nigerians and he declined that for me is no matter what went wrong in his government that I seen on the cake has made him a man of honor and an international elder statesman the model of his concession is what is being used in many african nations right now leaders who otherwise would not concede and receive def defeat his life has become a template that's what happens when you create a sense of empathy don't say i want the shoe so bad if i must steal i will steal i want the phone so bad if i must remove the phone of the seam of my roommate to just ask please grow up don't put people in trouble because of your desires it's too selfish one more time you are going to pray and say lord help me i'm tired of self-centeredness now my eyes have been opened and i'm seeing how much because of my life so many people's destinies are almost being destroyed my gossiping around to explain myself has caused pain to all, too many people from today i receive grace to shut my mouth my blackmail has destroyed too many people.
I have joined the hands of the heads of good friends. I have caused trouble for too many people. It's not worth it. I'm a child of God. stony heart put a heart of flesh listen two prayer points and we're done the next prayer point you're going to pray and say Lord let nothing aside from my relationship with you ever be a do or die in my affair in my life again let, let I will be responsible within the limits of responsibility but Lord I declare that aside from my relationship with you and my marriage let nothing be a do or die affair in my life again to make me almost want to destroy myself to get it lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray believe me when I tell you nothing aside from the purposes of God is a do or die affair you will kill yourself for nothing Hallelujah. Let's round up. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. We are reading down to 13. Keep standing if you can. We are rounding up already. Let me teach you something you may have never seen. After this manner, Jesus is teaching us how to communicate with heaven. Jesus is teaching us how to have an addiction for the things of God. And this is what he says. After this manner, therefore, in this pattern, pray. Pray with this order of priority. Number one, our Father which art in heaven. Priority number two, I reverence you. In the eyes of Jesus, your reverence for God is more important than the forgiveness of your sins. Look at it. After this man, I pray. Hmm. Jesus is teaching here. Hallowed be your name. That is the foundation for everything that I do. I want to reverence you. That is the reason why I will not go and smoke. It's not just because I'm running away from hell. No. I desire that you be lifted. Hallowed be your name. Next verse, your purposes. Are you seeing now? This is your prayer. The moment you reference the Father, the next priority is anything that will move his purposes. Look at this. I hallow your name and I desire your kingdom to come, your influence. And that desire is only achieved when your will is done in the earth. So he focuses on the will of God. Is that how you pray? No. Your needs. That's what you drum heaven with. You sing one or two praise and worship songs for two minutes and yell at heaven. But he's teaching us how to pray. Your kingdom come. This is what I want. Next verse. So that your kingdom can come effectively. Give us our daily bread. The reason why I need daily bread is not because I'm hungry. The reason why I need daily bread is because it's part of the tools that will empower me towards your kingdom coming. I need to eat. I need supplies in my life. I need the millions and the billions so that I can be comfortable and create the atmosphere for your kingdom to come on that wise give us this day our bread next verse because i want your kingdom to come and i know that you are a holy god that my sinful nature can act as a separation between me and you 
forgive me our debts as I forgive others so the reason why I am asking forgiveness is not just because I want to run to heaven the reason why I am asking for forgiveness is because I dis I love him so much I do not I want to clear everything away that can stop his name from being hallowed and stop his kingdom from coming are we together 13 and lead me not into temptation give me discernment not so that I will be called Apostle Joshua Selman give me discernment because if you lead me into temptation and my life is destroyed I will not participate in your kingdom coming and deliver me from evil there is a wicked devil there are curses and yokes there are witches and wizards there are covenants that are out to destroy lives lord i desire your kingdom to come but i'm also aware of these things so deliver me from evil and the summary of that prayer a reiteration for thine is the kingdom every power that is communicated is the power that comes for that kingdom and thy glory forever amen he said pray in this manner and your prayer will be answered when was the last time you prayed like that god give me a husband why god give me a wife why god give me a job why god wipe my tears why don't ask me that question god give me your word says so if you don't do it except you are not god and you say ah that's not a correct statement i'm god all by myself there is nothing i ever ask god that the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it if the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it it is useless simple it is completely useless will you receive the same way you receive a visitor the bible says be careful entertain men well for in need some of you have entertained strangers that's why you see us honor his presence so much because jesus left him without the holy spirit while i was praying i said holy spirit we're in partnership with you i will do the talking i will do all the things my own part of the deal i will do it well and i know for sure that's what gives us confidence to announce that people will be healed that's what gives us confidence there is an audacity there is always a side to your life you cannot explain that's the side where the holy ghost steps in if you can explain everything about your life you are walking alone there should be a supernatural dimension i've explained to you the part of the meeting that can be explained the other part now the holy ghost does not just talk he explains it with the results oh that's why i love him doesn't have room for long stories tonight god is giving someone another opportunity to raise a cry of dissatisfaction and say lord i'm tired the worship team sang it beautifully they said i'm tired of the status quo tonight there are many of us here who may be wondering but what is wrong with my life i've not done anything wrong what you need is an appointment by prophecy the bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give them beauty for ashes the oil of gladness for the spirit of heaviness it says that they may be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified we're going to pray the lord assured me of his presence in a mighty way to heal especially for the sick you must get angry this night and say lord i'm not going back with that situation see don't get too used to it the same way you receive the holy spirit reject certain things hallelujah let me show you one scripture back to our text john 9 let me tell you what can happen to you when you don't open up your heart to receive john chapter 9 while i was reading today i had to stop and say goodness so this thing did not start now two things can happen to you if you do not position yourself to receive 
Number 1, 9 verse 16. Listen to what happened. We have been accusing very innocent people around our society because we are not open to receive. John 9 verse 16. Are you ready? Read. Therefore, said some of the Pharisees, okay, this man is, this is Jesus they are talking about. Are you getting my point now? They saw somebody receiving a fantastic miracle. They saw this man getting blessed. And now they were frustrated because this thing was not just working. What kind of power is it? There are probably some of you here who have heard of the things that God is doing. And probably you just came to watch and see. Let me verify for myself. Look at it. It didn't just start today. Satan always wants to discredit people who are doing the things that God has asked them to do he said this man is not of god because he keepeth not the sabbath day what kind of silly excuse is that look at the excuse they were bringing those people lose their cattle they lose their cattle be careful lest you allow the devil cheat you by putting a very doubtful heart and you keep looking and say are miracles really real do people really get healed is it true it's a big shame that when people are healed we associate it most of the time to witchcraft power so we agree that witches and wizards can heal and then we are saying the lord of glory cannot heal verse 18 Oh, oh, oh. but the jews did not do what the jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind that's another thing so you either say the man of god is not a genuine man of god or the miracle that happened is not genuine that's what they said they said we don't believe that the man has been born blind and received his sight until they called his parents so you can watch people ss genotype in your presence chain and he said there's no way i'm studying medicine or i'm a doctor this thing cannot happen or you watch somebody holding a crutch get healed or somebody blind or deaf or someone oppressed liberated and you say just like that just like that what are you doing are you seeing two things can happen when your heart is not open to receive you can sit down and keep doubting this man of God is he using something if it's easy to get the something get it how many of you remember one gentleman called Sadiq Ibrahim I never knew it was so difficult to get power from the kingdom of darkness until that guy came he came to give some of you were around that miracle service this guy was a terrorist he was a terrorist he was part of the people that trained those who fought for post-election violence and he came was dying of hiv right dying of tuberculosis he had slept in the grave three days he said he could enter a church and look at a man of god and blow this whatever magic portion and the man of god would just get confused on the stage so he came for koinonia just like this and he was sitting outside hallelujah as soon as i came up on stage when he saw people falling he said there's power in this place whether there's witchcraft power or god's power there is power in this place because he knows what it means the kind he went to sleep in the grave for three days murdered little children and used their blood for sacrifice so that guns will not enter his body just for that little thing see the sacrifice you think it's easy to get power from satan get it hallelujah that guy was there he's on video as soon as i stepped on stage he said as soon as i came on stage all he saw was light and fire and that was the end of it he didn't even know when he collapsed then i called him by word of knowledge and i said he should come he's on video go and watch it right there he was healed of hiv he was healed of tuberculosis the results were there I mean some of you we then we used to meet also there he testified he gave his testimony 
it was verified it shocked him that was when he made up his mind they were still looking for him to kill him brothers and sisters the power of god exists miracles still happen i know that many of you believe but you have not received that reality that your situation can change tonight i believe god for somebody let's trust god together let's trust god together let's trust god together and say lord it can change it can change that genotype can change they refuse to allow you marry because you are ss that genotype can change that genotype can change you must not understand how everything can happen the bible says just as you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of how a child not the way of the wind that's how you do not know the work of god there are certain dimensions that are inexplainable hallelujah selena is here where is selena wave your hand i think it was her auntie that that one time we prayed for she had triplets right or something the children are still alive triplets one two three three children I just felt a need to clear this air because some of you come with all kinds of cynical spirits and you have problems that are killing you but rather than opening your heart you are there just wondering is God really the one doing this can somebody just fall down like that without being touched is it really true is it real it's not your fault it's the way some of us were raised you don't have to be angry listen listen when you ever hear a man criticizing a man of God, don't blame the person. Never insult the person. They are only talking that while we were insulting Jesus Christ on the cross, what did he do? He said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. Never find yourself trying to defend yourself. No, no. It's not part of your ministry. The psalmist said in Psalm 3, Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. He says, you are my glory and the lifter up of my head. I always tell people, Gamaliel spoke beautifully. He said, if it is of God, no man can stop it. If it is not of God, it will fail. There's no one beside you. I lead the earth to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth to worship you. I lead the earth to worship you. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus change our situations tonight there are many of us as you're sitting looking at me right now the problem that you have is only God that can help you because the load is too much are you getting me there are some of you it's like I see you in the hospital your situation right now is a matter of life and death your own is just it's not just admission maybe there is a terminal disease I remember a particular lady I was talking to. I think she might be somewhere here. A herbalist predicted her death today. Today, this 25th. The herbalist predicted that it's today that she would die. So when I got to hear about it, I said, interesting. Come and die here. Hallelujah. Just come and die here. There is a rod of a higher priesthood. There is a rod of a higher priesthood. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. That's what God is asking somebody tonight. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything to want for me to do? I am that I am. Lord 
can now prophesy. Up on your feet and begin to prophesy. I believe you. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Everywhere, inside and outside, connect. This is the moment of faith. I'm about to step back and let this most holy spirit. Step into your life. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything? for me to do I am that I am Come on, celebrate the God of miracles oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Is there anything you want for me to do Too hard for me to do I am that I am I am that I am hey. Is there anything Is there anything Too hard for you hard for him to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for him to do I am that I am lift your hands everybody and let us worship him Emmanuel, 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 your name is called Emmanuel, your name is called. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His name is God. Emmanuel. His name is called. Listen. The Bible says, listen. It says, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things. What is not possible? With God. Involve God. And it becomes possible that sickness will never go but with God that sickness suddenly leaves that situation will never change but with God that's why we're singing that song Emmanuel Emmanuel Hiya. 
Emmanuel 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 His name is called Your name is called Before I minister, I begin ministering. Hallelujah. There are two people that God is going to visit in a very strong way. Hallelujah. Both of them are outside. Hallelujah. The power of God will come mightily upon them. I don't know what it is that God wants to do. Those outside, just lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. I see the angels of the Lord walking outside. Two people. The power of God is coming mightily right now as I speak upon them. Please let me have them inside. Two people, mightily. It's a strong spirit of prophecy in this place. Two people, very mightily. By the power of the Holy Ghost. His name is called Emmanuel. His name is called Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Those of you in this row, just lift your hands. I don't know what it is that I see the angels of the Lord doing here. I see the angels of the Lord moving at the count of three there will be such a move of the spirit in this road let me have the people outside thank you Jesus one two three let the power of God move right now right now Ena na ne na si kanya, shaba ne na se na riani. Is the fire of the Holy Ghost, Emmanuel. His name is God, Emmanuel. His name is God. Emmanuel, his name is called Emmanuel, his name is called Bring her, no devil will stop her. Your name is called. Amen. 
Emmanuel. His name is called Emmanuel. Your name is called Emmanuel. His name is called. His name is God, Emmanuel, He is God, Emmanuel, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the presence of God, no demon, no devil, no altar. I don't care what altar of darkness. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. My secret place is calling you, oh God. My worship is calling you, oh God. My worship is calling you, oh God. Take my praise. hallelujah please lift your hands i see the angels of the lord moving now lift your hands we're about to cause devils and wicked spirits please follow me instrumentalist we are going to cause every power the bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father that tree must give way and I come under an apostolic anointing in the name of the one whose I am and whom I serve that at the count of three any power that is not of God inside and outside at the count of three we challenge those devils by the fire of the Holy Ghost as you shout three the power of God will rush inside and outside and there will be massive deliverances right now are you ready now? one Two, three, shout Jesus. Shake up a pacaposa. Kopo Seketa. I cause powers. Every wicked power. Every demon. Every activity of darkness. I cause you now. 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 Every act of witchcraft. Shekatetetetetete. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, you come under the judgment of God inside and outside. Right now, let the power of God bring deliverance. For upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Hallelujah those outside just those outside goodness i see a number of angels you're going to shout jesus after the count of three outside means everywhere that is not in and there will be massive deliverance thank you jesus are you ready now those outside i see the power of god like files of fire one two at the count of three Shout Jesus three. We dethrone altars. We dethrone yokes of darkness. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Those outside be sensitive. There is so much power. I don't know what it is, but the, the power of God is so strong outside. In the name of our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Name of our God. Bring the lady. Most high. Most high. You're the Lord. Most high. Leave this girl in peace now. Go now. Let her go. Don't waste our time. Let her go now. Bring this lady, please. I set you free. Now. Out of her now, that devil of darkness. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Hallelujah. Please help her, ladies. It's not easy, I know. Just find it's time for her deliverance. Her, she will come now quickly I call you Lord most high. don't touch her she will come by herself Let her go now. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go now. Thank you Jesus. I bring you liberty. Be free now. In Jesus name. She's free. name of Jesus it's over let her go now the blood of Jesus the name of Jesus Christ thank you you died for her let her go I come with the rod of a higher priest who let her go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you father I give you all the praise she's delivered completely in the name of Jesus Christ thank you I anoint you guys. Let the anointing of the Spirit flow through you as you minister in the name of Jesus. She will go. Come, lay hands on this lady. Out of her now, thou devil of darkness. I cost you. I see you in the Spirit. Out! Out! Let her go free.
her time of deliverance is now i speak to you wicked spirit let her go now jesus died listen let me tell you there is no power listen there is no power that will resist the power of god tonight the bible says let every soul be subject to the higher powers have you read that in your bible let every soul be subject when it sees powers that are higher than it it should be subject let every soul hallelujah esther 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 there is an esther that is not feeling fine you're sick not just i know there are many esters the lord is ministering to me i don't know what is wrong with that esther but you need a miracle a healing miracle esther please let's save time there is a lot we have to do tonight esther who is deborah 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 you are outside that deborah is wearing red you are wearing red red with black spots it's a shirt red with black spots deborah come your name is deborah i'm hearing the name queen queen is i think that's supposed to be a name queen who is queen 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 you are esther come come on while you hold them look guys speak to them and let them you will waste your time with demon spirits have a way of wasting people's time don't you will save yourself a lot of energy it makes no difference who is speaking queen who is queen? you are queen i need to pray for you you have a blood condition victoria 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 i'm hearing the name gabriel gabriel who is gabriel gabriel please just save time when i mention your case gabriel gabriel is outside outside the lord is ministering to me outside gabriel you are is it outside yes Gabriel is outside. You are Gabriel. You are outside. Hallelujah. Come, my dear. What is wrong with you? I need to pray for you. Because... The Lord is ministering to me. I saw this lady and I saw something that looks like a lizard and is sucking her blood physically. Look, come, come up. Look at this girl. Look at her. You will know that this girl doesn't look healthy. You don't even know what. And the Lord just opened my eyes and I saw something like a lizard just leads to her heart region and is just sucking her blood. This is how somebody just gets up and just dies. What happens to you? Your chest region. That devil is a liar. You'll be free. Hallelujah. There's no time to minister to your individual needs. Are you following me now? If God gives me a word for you, I'll just pray. Otherwise, ah, okay. come, 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 come. You must be set free. Now hold my hands. Out! Come out of her now! Out! Now! Blessed is he who comes i set you free from this captivity be free now praise the lord i'm going to pray for you who is having serious abdominal pain you're having pain just 
your stomach region here very seriously one of you here because I'm feeling that same pain so I know you we pray for you but, but that's, that's not really the major thing wrong with you what's wrong with you you'll be healed now thank you Jesus I bring you the power that is in the name of Jesus lay your hands on your stomach be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray for all of these people as I lay hands on you it doesn't matter what the situation is in the name of Jesus Christ I set you free in the name of Jesus Christ walk into the blessings and the promises of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be set free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit be set free in the name of the Lord Jesus um the lord is showing me about three people there's a severe skin infection that is you have done all you it's a very serious thing in fact it's even embarrassing it's even embarrassing there are three people this is one there's there's, there's two more please quickly it's a serious thing you have you have prayed about it you have used drugs nothing has gone please i'm seeing three people it's time for God to set you free. Don't worry. If there are still more people, you can connect. I'm just telling you the one that God is showing me. I don't care what it is. We sang that God will set you free. Please don't come out here to try God. It will leave. I don't care what it is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Please, those with peptic ulcers, just get ready. All kinds of ulcers. We're going to pray for you now. Please make sure it's, it's only skin infection. Only skin infection. Hold my hands, madam. I set you free in the name of Jesus. Be free now. Be free now in the name of Jesus. Be free now in the name of Jesus. As I pray for you, just go back to your seat. Oh, the power of God is strong on my hands. Be free now in the name of Jesus. I cause that spirit. Be free now in the name of Jesus. Let him go. I set you free. Be free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause skin infection in the name that is above all names. Hold my hands. Look at me. Look at me. I'm seeing you tied. Not only are you, I pray that God will visit you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let her go free. In the name of Jesus let her go free right now in the name of Jesus you're suffering from any kind of ulcer any kind of ulcer we're just flowing as the Holy Ghost is, is ministering right now there is a lot to be done so please ulcers ulcers God is ministering to me visit your people oh God these are the ones that you died for look how many people are inflicted by ulcers I'll pray for you very quickly please I want you to believe as I lay my hands on, on you the power of God will come upon you and you'll be free. Just begin to breathe in. Some of you will feel because the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing it. You will feel something leave you. Just come out of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Be free now. Out! Come out of her! Now! In the name of Jesus. Out! Out of her! Thank you, Jesus Christ. Be free right now. Out! Out! Please, as I pray for you, check yourself. He's able. Out! Come out! I will pray for you and I will talk to you. God. 
name of Jesus Christ I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ I set you free be free now in the name of Jesus Christ be free in the name of Jesus Christ he's able bring the lady shout in there Hey, hey, hey. Say he's able. Let her go in the name of Jesus. I set you free by the power of the highest. Say God. he's able. God is able. God. And that spirit of infirmity leave her right now never to return be free now in Jesus name complete freedom showing me someone you came here I'm seeing someone in your family lying down on the bed it's like a terminal disease that's one of the major reasons why you came here the Lord is showing me is a woman I think your mother someone's mother lying down on the bed who is that person I'm seeing someone on the bed and it's a very serious situation please who is that let's save time we have to really really be fast there's a lot to do who is that person please if you are the one just find your way quickly so I can pray with you Who went to Shika and came back? Shika and came back. Because this person I'm seeing, they took the person to Shika and brought the person back. You? My mother has one being in Shika. She went to Shika. What are you coming out for? Why is the man insisting that is the one? What is it? You came from Shika. You are coming from Shika. What's wrong with you? This one is a woman who is not you, but anyway, what's this situation? But it's a, no, no, no. What, what, just straight to the point, what happened? My body is very hot and the, the head is turning me like move, I want to fall. This is the spirit of death now. You would have died before today. Hold my hands. I want to pray with you. You'll be free now. Thank you, Jesus. I set you free. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What couldn't you do before? Ogasa, what couldn't you do before? What couldn't you do before? What what is it that you could not do before? Okay, come, climb. Let's see if you feel weak again. I pray for you. Just, just walk. Let me see. Try to jump. Any weakness? Don't worry now. If you want to jump, you'll fall. Shabia, I've prayed for you. Fall and die here. Jump. 
Any weakness? Any weakness in your body? Try it again. Try it again. Look at this is somebody that came. He said he went to Shika. Huh? Are you sure? Don't pretend though. Are you feeling fine? You are completely fine. You are here because I saw the spirit of death. Your own is not just sickness. Lord, it is perfected in the name of Jesus. Please take on your shoes. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me somebody with a condition. Is this my left or right leg? This is left. My left leg, I don't know if it's a, if it's a bone condition or a pain that you have in there. Please, who is that person? The Lord wants to heal you right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. You're the one? Oh, you can see it. You can even see it. What's the problem? I actually played football. Right You're a footballer? Yes. I had a fracture for eight months. You have a fracture. Now, on the leg, there is a fracture. Is it true? Please make sure you tell us the truth when you come here. Look at me. Watch yourself get healed now. Come. Don't close your eyes. Open your eyes. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Aya. The Holy Spirit. Young Cho wrote a book. He said, the Holy Spirit, my senior partner. Watch what happens to this guy now. My brother, look at me. You are an adult, so you will not tell lies. Right? Watch. I don't want you to miss your miracle. Where is the fracture? Exactly. All right. Watch what happens to you now. Lay your own hands there. The hands you'll be using every day. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. You sense what is happening to you right now. Are you seeing this? Look at what is happening to him. You see the power of God? You see the power of God on him? He's laying hands on himself oh, and he cannot even stand again. That's the end of it. Stand up. Stand up. Jump. Do what you couldn't do. Just do it. Test yourself. Look at this. Look at. See the guy is even rejoicing. <laughs> this is somebody with a fracture. Fracture on his leg. Come on, give Jesus praise for you here. See. Let's go. There's no pain. Try doing like this. Do like this. That's how you know whether there was pain or not. Look at, look at, look at what you do. Come on, give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. Never return. Your leg. Come, 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 come. Don't worry. What's the situation? Pain there. Let me see. Just, just the, no, no, no. You don't need to lift your head. Just that point. The joints there. How long? Since two weeks now. Two weeks. What happened? Just like that. You woke up and the pain refused to go. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Which one do you want? You want to lay hands on yourself or I should just pray? <laughs> huh? All right, but seriously, let's pray. Hold my hands. Heal her, Lord. Set her free right now. The power of God is coming upon you, that leg. In the name of Jesus Christ. No pain. See, that's the power of God coming upon your leg. Check yourself. Check. Honestly. Check yourself. Look at it. The power of God is moving strongly. Check. Check. Do you feel any pain? You feel any? No pain is. She's even surprised. No pain is. Give Jesus praise. That devil has gone never to return again. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goodness. The Lord just showed me a mighty miracle that has happened now. Someone you have a hole. You used to have a hole in your teeth. Check it now. You will not see that hole there. Please check it and come out. This is a miracle that has just happened now. Please. I'm going to start praying in mass for people. But you will be very surprised. When, when that happens to you, just come out quickly. The Lord, show, once God shows me something, he has done it. Please check yourself. Check yourself. We are not faking this thing here. Make sure you check yourself. You will be very surprised to find out that there used to be a hole. And that hole is closed. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Your mother, your mother, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be healing for your mother wherever she is. Let there be healing for your mother in the name of Jesus. Why did you come out? For your mother hold my hands father for mommy we pray let there be healing and perfection in the name of the lord jesus christ please make sure you only come out for the cases i call why is he out 
Eh? Okay, let me pray for you. Father, for the mother, we agree right now. Let there be freedom in the name of Jesus. Look at this. Look at the miracle. Your teeth is closed now. Come, come. Please, we need a witness. We need a witness. Is it true? Don't tell lies here. You are in the presence of God. Where is it? Sorry, can you open your mouth for me to see? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope that's not. Let me see. You used to have a hole. Please come whether come and check. No. Let's have any independent person so that you don't say we are acting this thing now. Come. Come and check. Check if there is any hole. Are you are you seeing that? There's no. It was really paining me when I it was paining you when you came here. The hole has been there. Who knows about it? Only your sister knows about it. And, it's, and you've been healed. Any pain now? Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please stand up, everybody. I want to pray for eye conditions now. Let's just flow the way God is. This is nice. Please, if you have any problem with your eye, just lay your hands. There will be healing miracles right now. There will be healing miracles right now with the eyes immediately i pray for you some of you the power of god will touch your eyes just check yourself and when you find out that there is a miracle i want to take a few testimonies there please lift your lift one hand and place one hand on your eyes jesus will give you the praise hallelujah right now in the name of jesus christ i rebuke every kind of eye problem in the name of jesus i cause cataract in the name of Jesus, glaucoma, I curse you now in the name of Jesus. Short-sightedness, long-sightedness, be healed right now. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I command to be healed. And every spirit of blindness, every spirit of infirmity, every kind of blindness, whether in one eye, whether in both eyes, I rebuke you right now. I command be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Now check yourself. Please check yourself. Check yourself. God is doing great miracles. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Hallelujah. While they are doing that, the Lord is showing me people with heart conditions. Heart conditions. You have a heart condition, whether a hole in your heart or any kind of heart condition. Please, can I have those people? Heart condition. You've been diagnosed medically to have a heart condition. You have a heart problem. Who? And he's preparing to go to India. What? He's preparing to go to India for surgery. What of you? Yes, sir. What of you? You. You have a heart problem since when did you know about it february the doctors told you what did they say is wrong palpitation palpitation oh. doctor doctor where's that doctor in ushers you are the one self oh yeah Ogasa, what does that mean doctor tell us huh say she has palpitations abnormal beating of the heart ah okay loud and you can hear it even when she is so it's, a, you use stethoscope, you can hear it. so it's a serious situation she'll be healed now you're a doctor now wait you'll go to hospital tomorrow but for now my dear do you believe jesus will heal you completely lay one hand on your chest lord let her be healed right now the power of god is flowing through you just breathe in and out thank you jesus christ be healed right now by the power of the holy ghost be set free please check yourself lord have mercy on the father in the name of jesus how do you know now try it breathe in and out let's see thank you jesus christ let there be perfection in the name of jesus let there be perfection the devil wants to bring stroke as i just held you huh is that true you're already feeling half of you some okay your dad too of stroke because immediately I had I held your hand, I just saw stroke. Father, we rebuke that stroke. 
in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost be healed right now we are going to rebuke delay in marriage now rise up on your feet the devil is a liar please rise up on your feet Some of you are smiling. That means it doesn't concern you. Because those who it really concerns is a serious issue. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray for you. Please follow me, guys. Hallelujah. Most marital delays are demonic in nature. And we're going to arrest it right now. You can stand in for yourself. You can stand in for your loved ones. Please lift your hands, everybody. You'll be amazed at what will happen right now. Everyone, please lift your hands. You can stand for yourself. You can connect. Hallelujah. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. Father, I pray that as they shout that name, every, every demonic force that has held anyone's marital destiny goodness i sense the power of god in the name that is above all names father i pray that as your people shout that name i tell you many of you the power of god will rush like fire on you in the name of jesus every wicked manifestation of spirit husband or wife any spirit entity that cleaves itself to anybody as you shout that name by the power of the holy ghost their activities end now one two three i cast those spirits in the name of jesus let god's people go in the name of jesus out of them now by the power of the Holy Ghost, inside and outside, I command those powers to let you go now. Release their marital destinies now. Release their marital destinies now. Every cause that stops marriage in families, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I arrest it. I arrest it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. We are still going to shout that name over this case. The Lord is not done yet. Lift your hands again. I want you to shout it at the top of your voice. And as you shout that name, the fire of the Holy Ghost will hit you like a tornado. God is visiting situations right now. Thank you, Jesus. One. Two. Get ready now. Get ready with your hands lifted. Three. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. I command chains, chains, marital chains, be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. I command chains, be broken in the name of Jesus. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Be broken. Let marital doors open in the name of jesus i prophesy over your marital destiny in the name that is above all names the bible says seek out of the book and read it said none of this shall fail none shall want her mate ladies wherever your husband is in the name that is above all names i call him into your life i call him into your life listen not a man your husband not a man your husband may he come into your life in the name of jesus 
and i prophesy over our brothers in the name that is above all names that sister that god has destined for you we release her into your life now 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 hallelujah now i'm going to pray for all sick people especially those who have come from everywhere while you come out do you have your prayer request please if you don't have it it's time to begin to write it now for all those who are sick you are sick in your body you came specifically for healing it's your time now please come out please come out come out just come and stand here everyone sick everyone sick inside and outside just find your way and line up your ushers just arrange them quickly stand here believing that god will set you free he that comes unto God must come believing. I want you to expect the power of God to come mightily upon your life. Whatever the situation is, I'm going to lay hands on every one of you. And as I lay that hands upon you, hallelujah, I want you to expect the power of God to flow into your life. Whatever the situation is, hallelujah. Worship team, lead us in a powerful moment of worship. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you the praise. Thank you for healing. In the name of Jesus. Those of you who are sitting, please write your prayer requests. Once you are done, just begin to pray in tongues. And then we'll do this very quickly. My God is awesome. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heal now. Heal now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hide me from the rain. I cause everything that is not of God. My God. Out. My God is awesome. Heal now. When I'm broken. Pray me. My Ow. God is he awesome. Awesome. He can move in the name of Jesus. Strength for you. I cause sickness. He is awesome. I want you to believe that God is setting you free. He is awesome. My God. Heal. In the name of Jesus. He is awesome. He is awesome. He now. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Be healed, mommy. Pray, in the name of Jesus. Out of her now. From there. 
My God is thank you, Lord awesome. Jesus Christ. He can move mountains. Shield now. He Please, while you're seated, just pray in tongues. Hide me from Jesus Christ. My God, my God is awesome. Heals me when I oh, Jesus. His grace in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, be healed, perfection, my God is in the name of Jesus, perfection in your body, right now, in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All those trusting God for a job, please stand up. Please, I want you to believe. I want you to believe. Hallelujah. I want you to believe as I pray for you. I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit leads me. There are people who came here tonight and your, true, your sincere desire is that God will visit you. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Promotion neither comes from the east nor the west. In the name that is above all names. I pray. May the Lord give you a miracle job in the name of Jesus. I speak it and I prophesy it. May my God give you a miracle job in the name of Jesus. As you are lifting up that hands, let an anointing come upon that hand. Keep it lifted, please. That hand that is lifted, I pray. Let an anointing come upon it. The oil of gladness that sets you above your equals. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you have submitted your CV, I pray. May my God cause them to visit you in the name of Jesus. And every power that is stopping your job, in the name that is above all names, the four horns that lift up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, against Israel. I command right now, let those doors of jobs be opened supernaturally. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please everybody stand. Submit your prayer request. Do we have it? This is a very prophetic moment. We have a few minutes, but this is where everybody gets to receive. Please. I want you to be very, very sensitive. If you've not submitted your prayer request, please just do that quickly. This, this, just dedicate yourself to these few moments because they are very, very prophetic what we're about to do. Any more people, please, quickly. We have a God that answers prayers here. Hallelujah. This is the second time God is giving me this instruction. Usually we just pray on it and once we are done here. But this is the second time the Lord is telling me that I should take this request with me and I should pray over them through the night. There is a God that answers prayers. And Hezekiah took the threat letter to God before the altar. He said, Lord, behold their threatenings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to pray. Hallelujah. This request represent impossible situations for some hallelujah situations that only the power of god can change there are some situations here if we have to read it even we the men of god will be discouraged because of the kind of request that's why we don't bother reading it we just drop it to the one who created the heavens and the earth i want you to know that within these few minutes i want you to pray from the depths of your heart and those following us online 
now is the time for them to connect hallelujah because as we pray over these requests the power of god will turn these requests into testimonies in the name of the lord jesus we're going to pray pastor alpha come femi come benga come just pray lay hands on this and prophesy stretch your hands everybody towards this request and begin to pray begin to pray and prophesy hallelujah everybody stretch your hands and begin to declare and say lord whatever i wrote here is turned into a testimony Rabaka pro so so pretecate. Sidebo shopro dos copre decate. Secatata tabaladara. Shopro toko to precate baladabos. Lord, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, change this situation. Change this situation. Secatata. Rekete bokoto prekete baladabos, bataka papa kate, e prekete lekete, sote kete pros, e prekete lekete tete, rekete rekese, e pros ko proto subah, lekete baladabaka tablekete baladabos. In the name of Jesus, we turn this to testimony. Jesus Lord under this corporate anointing we release answers to this request we release answers to this request let them receive emergency attention of heaven now in the name of Jesus we release answers now in the name of Jesus thank you because with God nothing shall be impossible and thank you for the release of the harvest of the seed in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Please everybody stand. Those who are visiting with us, all those who are who came from outside Zaria, please come out. I'll minister to you now. I want you to come out expecting the Lord. There are so many people who have come from different places. Please just come out. Sit up. I'll pray for them. And I'm going to pray for everyone for a release of fresh fire and fresh unction hallelujah it's not enough to come and watch miracles hallelujah but you are going to pray that you carry this anointing hallelujah and you represent the kingdom thank you so much for those who came lizzie and her friends thank you so much all the way from abuja thank you pastor alpha all the way from kogi state eddie from joss Launching from Abuja, I see a number of people. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to believe. I don't know what you came here for, but I really want you to believe by the power of the Holy Ghost. I want you to believe. I'm going to minister to you. Two things will happen to you. Whatever situation you came here trusting God for, I'm going to release my faith with you. And secondly, that you will carry an anointing. I tell you, something will come heavy upon your life. You will carry an anointing. You will carry an anointing you will carry an anointing in the name of jesus christ just clash the symbols please play strings 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 in the name of jesus anoint them in the name of jesus be blessed Take an anointing back. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Be healed, be blessed. Take this anointing back. Take this anointing in the name of Jesus. Awesome is your name. Walk in greater levels of power. Greater levels of power. In the name of Jesus, you do glorious things. Your name, take 
make an anointing in the name of Jesus Christ break through every closed door I open it now by the power of the Holy Ghost take this anointing with you in the name of Jesus to your locality do mighty things for the King I release your marital destiny. This is what the Lord is ministering. I release your marital destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Take this anointing. Oh, in the name of Jesus I open every closed door in the name of Jesus I open every closed door let the fragrance of the spirit be upon you in the name of Jesus Christ I command breakthrough I hear my spirit breakthrough I release breakthrough breakthrough by the power of the Holy Ghost I command breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I command breakthrough. 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 Financial breakthrough. God is bringing you financial breakthrough by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the world grow in the name of Jesus. Let the world grow. Let the anointing come. Closed door that I see in the name of Jesus. I open this closed door that I see by the power of the Holy Ghost. Take this anointing that it makes you mighty. Everybody stand up. The time is against us. Please, everybody rise. I want to do an impartation right now and then I'll just prophesy on our lives. Please lift your hands. Something will come upon your life. Hallelujah. This is where certain people will receive something. I want to impart the gifts of the Spirit. I already sense a strong atmosphere. Jiana ma si na 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 na, Jiana na na si na 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 na. Shiva na na se pariya na man. Lift your hands in the name of the Lord Jesus. The healing anointing is going to come on many people now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. The healing anointing inside and outside. Take it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Take it now. Take it now. 
Go and heal the sick. Go and heal the sick. You will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. You will cast out devils. Shake it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. I pray. I command the prophetic. Let it be activated now. Prophetic fountains be open now. Visions, dreams. I command in the name of Jesus. Receive it. An unction. You don't need to bring them out. You don't need to bring them out. We activate it. Take it now. Supernatural experiences, dreams, visions. Sopotopate. I command leadership mantles. Leadership mantles. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Strong leadership mantles. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. Stop I'm about to pray the nine gifts of the Spirit and many more listed in the Bible in the name of the Lord Jesus. At the count of three, different gifts will be activated in people right now. One, two. Three, receive it. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. Take it now. I activate the full power of the spirit. I activate it inside and outside. Take it. Let the Holy Ghost come upon you in power. Receive it. Receive it. of healing word of knowledge gifts of prophecy it will come like fire it will come like fire it will burn you it will come like fire it's the fire of the Holy Ghost the fire of the Holy Ghost two of you hold your hand hold your hand take it now take it now take it i activate the gifts of the spirit every apostolic ministry in this place take the fire take the fire take the fire every apostolic ministry take the fire every prophetic ministry take the fire take the fire take the fire hallelujah there are many of you who are kingdom financiers financial apostles everyone will be blessed but there are specific people lift your hands my god i pray that these people let an unction my god my god my god my god take it financial dominion by the power help them help them help them take it ideas i activate it by the power of the holy ghost financial apostles arise arise take the kingdom
Now I want to prophesy very quickly. Please, I want you to shout Amen. Every closed door over your life, in the name that is above all names, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every closed door, be open now. 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 I pray right now. Every opportunity you have lost, I don't care what it is. I prophesy right now. Receive restoration. Receive restoration. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive restoration now. Receive restoration now. Hallelujah. Every family under captivity and hardship in the name that is above all names. I command those families to be free now. Be free now. Free from hardship. Free from hardship. The Bible says to appoint unto them that morning in Zion. I pray whatever made you cry this month in the name that is above all names I cause it to its root now. I cause it to its root now. I cause it to its root now. I pray everyone who has the key to the next level of your life every destiny helper i don't care where they are right now in the name of jesus like prophet ezekiel i call them he said i prophesied as i was commanded destiny help us arise come forth destiny help us arise come forth destiny help us arise arise hallelujah wherever you have faced resistance in your life may this favor anointing in the name that is above all names as i prophesy right now let that favor anointing hit you like a tornado go back to where they rejected you and watch my god make a way for you i command favor i command favor in the name of jesus whatever has been speaking against your life and your destiny let the blood speak for you now let the blood speak for you now any terminal disease here any terminal disease here we terminate it once and for all in the name of jesus every dying destiny every dying destiny like the bones in the book of ezekiel hear ye the word of the lord whatever you have that is dying whether it's your business whether it's your family whether it's your relationship whether it's your marriage i come with a prophetic voice hear ye the word of the lord come alive now come alive now come alive now come alive now i prophesy that by the next miracle service you will return with a change of garment that everyone that sees you will know that my god has visited you every ministry every fellowship every group every church 
every assembly represented here i pray let an unusual unction rest upon your ministry everything you see happening here go and reproduce it in the name of jesus i release upon you that power in the name that is above all names whatever has stopped your church from growing whatever has stopped your ministry from growing i command ministry grow church grow in the name of jesus hallelujah lord we give you the praise i'm going to make an altar call right now if you're here and you've never given your heart to the lord jesus please listen this is a very serious moment we're out of time you've never made jesus lord of your life inside and outside you probably were invited you may have been a christian but you've never truly declared the lordship of christ i'm going to invite you to come here or you've been born again and you found yourself derailing this is the greatest miracle please everybody rise just one minute just to encourage those who are coming out please let's rise right now you belong to that category you are saying lord i return to you i don't care whether you've been born again before please i want you to leave your seat and come out right now leave your seat and come out right now you want to make a decision you're making a decision for the lord jesus for the first time please listen or you've given your heart to the lord but you found yourself backsliding don't wait for anybody you are the first person please appreciate them i believe there are people god bless you god bless you thank you thank you thank you they are coming koinonia celebrate them inside and outside thank you for the courage we salute your courage god bless you god bless you keep coming keep coming it's a new day it's a new season you are saying goodbye to yesterday and god gives you the gift of tomorrow to remedy for the mistakes of yesterday thank you jesus for these ones keep coming keep coming god bless you no matter how far keep coming don't be afraid don't be ashamed of anybody it's a personal affair tonight thank you jesus hallelujah i salute your courage for those of you who took out the time to come lift your right hands and from the depths of your heart you're not reciting a poem i want you to say after me lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe you died for me i believe you shed your blood to set me free i receive that freedom tonight and i receive eternal life into my spirit in the name of jesus from today i declare that i'm born again i'm a child of god holy spirit come and live in me i make up my mind to live for jesus all the days of my life forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for making that decision let me pray for you father preserve these ones you brought them out by your power preserve them in the name of the lord jesus may your christian experience be authentic in the name of the lord jesus thank you so much for making this decision where are they following okay you have a gentleman just lead you that gentleman waving his hands please just follow them they'll have your details and you'll be back to your seat celebrate jesus hallelujah please all those worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time attending any of our meetings we love you we celebrate you please rise up on your feet and just come out here koinonia celebrate them all who have come from far and near this is your first time you are very very welcome celebrate them appreciate them thank you for coming thank you for coming thank you for coming thank you for coming we celebrate you we honor you no matter how far come there is a blessing for you there is a prayer for you the lord brought you here to bless you thank you so much koinonia is this the best you can do lord jesus we thank you for bringing these ones hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much for coming all of you who took out the time to come we really celebrate you we appreciate you hallelujah this is koinonia ministry put together a program put together by eternity network international thank you so much for coming 
who are here every Friday, not this exact venue, but every Friday, as God grants you the grace, it will always be a blessing having you around. Praise the Lord. We have a blessing in the house, and this is the gift we release to everyone who comes. And I want the saints of God to stretch their hands and just bless you. I want you to receive it. Please bless them. Professor, you have a blessing upon your lips. I want you to speak it. We bless you. Let the hand of God be strong upon your life. In the name of Jesus, we bless you with hunger for the things of the Spirit. We bless you with passion for God. In the name of Jesus, we bless you with advancement. We bless you with favor. We bless you with speed. In the name of Jesus, may you experience the power of God strong in your life. We bless your finances. Let the heavens be open over your life. In the name of Jesus, thank you again for coming. We love you and we celebrate you. Now, we'd just like you to follow the ushers, that gentleman waving his hands, and they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf. Koinonia, celebrate them very quickly. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.